Okay, now having studied the demand and the supply curves, we can now talk about consumer and producer welfare. We know that the demand curve is very much linked to what consumers are willing and able to pay for a good or service. Okay? And we know that the supply curve tells you about what suppliers are willing and able to receive when supplying a good or service. So we can actually bring in welfare effects now. And you can say, well, at certain prices, how well off are consumers? Okay? How are consumers faring? at given prices, right? So, we're going to start off by looking at consumer surplus, consumer welfare. Right, consumer surplus can be defined very simply as this. Consumer surplus is the difference between the price consumers are willing and able to pay for a good or service, okay, and the price they actually pay. Right, so what are consumers willing and able to pay? Well, let's have a look. Let's say, we've got a basic demand curve, a downward sloping demand curve. Let's say that the price for a good or service is at P1. Well, look at our demand curve. The demand curve goes way beyond P1, which tells us that there are many consumers that are willing and able to pay a higher price for that good or service. Well, they're willing and able to pay a higher price, yet the price is lower than what they're willing and able to pay. The price is at P1. Therefore, they're benefiting. All right? But how much are they benefiting by? Well, we can work out that area. Okay? We can work out the actual surplus, okay, the surplus welfare by simply shading this triangle. Okay, that triangle represents the different prices that consumers are willing and able to pay for the same good or service, okay, where the price is actually at P1. Right, so some consumers would have been willing to pay this price up here. The quantity demanded would have been down there. But actually, by them paying P1 only, they're benefiting by that entire distance. Right? And they're buying more Okay? They're buying a higher quantity than what they would have done otherwise. So that entire triangle okay, measures the welfare gain by the price being a P1. All these consumers are benefiting by that shaded area. That's the consumer surplus. The difference between what consumers are willing and able to pay for a good or service and the price they actually pay. Okay? What about producer surplus then? Well, let's have a look. So if I just draw a supply curve now. Okay. This is another very simple concept to grasp, because producer surplus. So let's draw a supply curve. That looks like that, upward sloping supply curve. Again, let's pick a price, and let's call that price P1. Quantity supplied at P1 is Q1. Okay, again, let's look here. There's the price okay, which um, suppliers are receiving, but in truth, the supply curve goes below that price, which tells you that there are suppliers down here that would have been willing and able to supply this good or service at a lower price. Well, the price they actually receive is at P1. They're receiving a higher price than what they would have been willing and able to supply. So they're benefiting by getting a higher price. All right? How much are they benefiting? They're benefiting by this entire triangle down here. Okay? That's how much they're benefiting from. So it's the area above the supply curve but below the price. That entire triangle is how much producer benefits. Producer would have been happy, some producer would have been happy to supply this level of quantity at this price. Well, they're now selling at that price, they're benefiting. So, producer surplus is defined as the difference between the price producers are willing and able to supply a good or service at okay, and the price they actually receive. So the difference between the price they're willing to supply your service at and the price they actually receive. The difference between the two is the welfare gain, is the producer surplus. Okay, let's stick this all on one diagram. Okay, let's see how this looks on one diagram. So in truth, in an exam situation, if the question is asked you to show producer or consumer surplus, you just draw the respective curve. So for consumer surplus, just draw demand curve and isolate consumer surplus. If they wanted you to show only producer surplus, just draw the supply curve and show the producer surplus. Okay? If they wanted you to show both together, well then draw both curves together and let's see how that looks. Okay? So let's say the question was asking you to show producer and consumer surplus, you would draw a demand and the supply curve. Okay? Supply and demand there. The equilibrium price would be at P1, which is where they cross, and we'll talk about that in the, uh, in the next video. There's P1 and the quantity okay, in the market will be Q1. So P1, Q1 there. Alright. Now good tip.
Whenever you're showing producer or consumer surplus, make sure your curves, your balance supply curves, touch the y-axis. doesn't matter where. Make sure they touch the y-axis. It gives you an area to work with. So we know now that consumer surplus is the area above the price line but below the demand curve. Okay? It's very simply this shaded triangle there. And then the producer surplus is just the area beneath the price line but above the supply curve. Okay? I'm doing a different colour. It's doing green. There's that area there. And that's how you show it. Okay, so they ask you to show producer and consumer service on one diagram. Okay, with equilibrium market price here, that's how you do it. Just pick out the respective areas, the triangles, okay, and share them in like that. But don't stop there. In an exam, even if you're just showing one or the other, make sure everything's properly labeled. Okay, this is okay, but still wouldn't get you full marks because you're not really labeled anything. So what I would do is label each of the areas. Okay, I would label that consumer surplus. Alright, and I would label this producer surplus. Okay? Always go the extra mile when it comes to drawing diagrams and economics. Okay? Make sure everything is labeled. Have OCD with diagrams, it's a good idea. Alright, I would also label the respective triangles. So you've got P1 there, that's good. Label that E, why not? Just to, to show a point there, and I'll label that point here, A, and maybe label that point B. And then if you want it down below, remember on the side, you can say triangle P1 A E is the consumer surface, I'll say CS, whereas triangle P1 B E is producer surface. Yeah? Why not do that as well? Again, just show that you know what you're doing. And while I'm here, a few pointers about drawing diagrams. You're lucky, if you're listening to the video at this stage, you're going to benefit hugely. What do economists, what do examiners like to see when you draw a diagram? Well, one, they like to see pencils being used. Pencils are a very good idea. In case you make a mistake, you can rub it out. Pencils are good. Rulers are good as well. Draw your lines nice and straight, nice and neat. Make sure your axes are always labelled and labelled properly. Okay? Don't just label P and Q, label price and quantity. Okay? Just get it all done properly. Label your curves, draw your curves properly using rulers again and label your curves, S1, D1, okay? label your equilibrium prices if that's what you're doing as well. Everything needs to be fully labelled, drawn big, drawn clearly and annotated properly. Okay? How those to do with diagrams, okay? But that's producer consumer service. If you ever get questions like that in the exam, easy, easy questions, okay? Don't mess them up. That's done for you. Enjoy. Thank you.